the Nkwasi Mound, um, like the Cherokee people, have been here in the mountains of Western North Carolina since time immemorial, right? Um, as, as an archeologist, as someone who studied the material culture that's been discovered um, around the Nkwasi Mound, I think it's safe to say that the mound um, was probably first constructed perhaps a thousand years ago, like, like around 1000 AD or so by um, ancestors of Cherokee people during a time period that anthropologists would call the Mississippian period. Um, and so interestingly, uh, the Nkwasi Mound itself has never actually been the subject of archaeological investigations, uh, uh, sort of classical investigations. It's never, it has never been excavated into. Um, there have been uh, ground penetrating radar studies at the Nkwasi Mound, which show that it has several layers of construction um, and then a dense layer of occupation near the top. And that would be very consistent with a um, Platform mound that's first constructed during the Mississippian period has multiple layers of building and layers of occupation and and then um, somewhere near the top is probably the location of um, a, a late 18th century Cherokee townhouse, um, which would have been the townhouse at Nkwasi that appears in um, colonial period documents and Revolutionary War period documents from from anywhere from like the 1720s. 1730s up through um, uh, 1776. There's really good documentation of Nkwasi as a, a Cherokee town with a townhouse um, on top of that mound. And so um, that's sort of like a brief archaeological history of Nkwasi. It's We can understand it very well as a, I mean, really classic, like, you know, Mississippi, Mississippian period platform mound that looks very similar to tall um, Mississippian mounds that are found at sites like the, um, uh, the Peachtree Mound farther to the west and southwestern North Carolina. Um, it looks a little bit like the Nacoochee Mound in, in northern Georgia. So it fits really well on that model of uh, Mississippian platform mounds. And then we know that it was used um, uh, as the location of a Cherokee townhouse, marking that, that center of Nkwasi town um, in the late 18th century. So Nkwasi was one of, of a few uh, Cherokee mother towns. And, and Cherokee mother towns were particularly important places on the social and political landscape of, of um, in particular, 18th century Cherokee communities, as we understand it. So these were important sort of, you know, centers for social and political activity. Um, Cherokee in the 18th century, uh, you know, really associated with, um, with their town. Their town was a real sense of identity and also these groups of towns. So um, Nkwasi is sort of at the, at the northern end of the Cherokee middle towns. And this is a, a really like a, a, a very meaningful social and, and political and economic unit. So the middle towns begin uh, just south of the, of the North Carolina border down in Georgia, um, probably at the site of Old Estato in modern day Dillard, Georgia. And then you just follow the river the Little Tennessee River up to up to Nkwasi and then a little farther up toward the towns of Watauga and and Cowie and you know you've got this series of towns each one of which would have would have had a townhouse up and down the Little Tennessee River and and that middle town those middle towns were a really coherent unit um, and so Nkwasi would have been a, a particularly important you know place in those Cherokee um, uh, middle towns as we think about the future of um, the Nkwasi Mound, and, and as people are interested in thinking about sort of, you know, what they can do, um, I think, again, just, you know, prioritizing and really foregrounding um, the voices of Cherokee people in, in what happens with that mound, you know, that, that is a place that, you know, for hundreds of years has been uh, an important sacred cultural site for um, members of the Eastern Band of, of Cherokee Indians and, and, and their ancestors. And so I think first and foremost is, is really listening to, you know, what Cherokee people have to say about that, about that mound and that landscape and what it means and, and how it should be preserved. The fact that here in 2021, we're still able to go there and visit it and um, see a, a kind of reclamation of that land, at least partially by, by the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians and and have these conversations about its preservation, um, that to me is just a you know, remarkable uh, testament to the resilience of Cherokee people. And I think the mound really embodies that.